The chair is very happy to welcome the former mayor of Salt Lake City, Utah, who had served as mayor uh, from 2000 up until earlier this year. And after he left just recently, he founded an organization called the High Road for Human Rights, uh, dedicated to facilitating grassroots advocacy on issues of torture, genocide, global warming, and human trafficking. He now serves as that organization's president uh, he is known to many of us uh, in the Congress, and we welcome him. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. I am honored to address you today, and along with millions of others, am pleased that you are considering your solemn responsibility to ascertain and disclose to the American people the nature and scope of egregious abuses of power by the administration. Ascertaining and disclosing the truth about these matters is vital in order to restore the rule of law and the crucial role Congress plays in a system of checks and balances that has been utterly eviscerated. We still have no idea about the nature and scope of the administration's felonious warrantless wiretapping program. We don't know if dozens, thousands, or millions of Americans have been victims of the illegal spying initiative. How were those communications used? Were my communications intercepted? Were yours? We, the American people, are entitled to know. United States agents have illegally tortured detainees and have kidnapped, disappeared, and tortured or caused others to torture people around the world, including some like Mahar Arar and Khaled al-Masri, who had no connection whatsoever to terrorism. However, the American people have not learned how this unprecedented, blatantly illegal program operated, whether it is continuing, or the consequences suffered by the people who have been subjected to these monstrous human rights abuses. Because the courts have blindly accepted the perpetrator's invocation of the frighteningly overbroad state secrets doctrine and summarily dismissed cases challenging these illegal human rights abusing practices, the American people will learn the truth only if Congress meets its responsibilities. The administration has engaged in heinous human rights violations, the most serious breaches of trust, abuses of power, injurious to the nation, astounding denials of due process, including indefinite detention without charges or without even a hearing, war crimes, crimes against peace, misleading Congress and the American people about threats to our nation's security and the supposed case for war, and grave violations of treaties, the Constitution, and domestic statutory law. What are the potential remedies? First, there has never been a more compelling case for impeachment. Nothing would speak so loudly regarding the principled nonpartisan commitment of our nation to the rule of law and to our jealous embrace of our constitutional democracy. I urge the consideration by Congress of federal legislation that would instruct the courts they are not to consider signing statements when determining the meaning of legislation and provide that no one can rely upon signing statements or opinions of the Office of Legal Counsel as a defense for a violation of the law. I also urge Congress to seek a declaratory judgment as to the legal effect of the administration signing statements. Some members of the administration appear to be bent on attacking Iran. I urge Congress to reassert its vital constitutional role and not just send letters of concern, not just make threats about uh, initiating impeachment proceedings, but forbid by a criminal statute with severe penalties any attack against Iran, except as permitted under the United Nations Charter and the Constitution, absent explicit authorization by Congress. 
Special prosecutors should be authorized, designated, and assigned to investigate and prosecute violations of the law by members of the administration. Legislation strict, strictly limiting the application of the state secret doctrine should be urgently considered in order that the courts will once again provide a meaningful check on abuses of power and violations of the law by members of the executive branch. Severe punishment should be provided for any government agent who engages in or authorizes torture or cruel and human or degrading treatment of any person being detained anywhere without exception. Congress should make clear what process must be followed before any U.S. treaty obligations are violated or terminated by any member of the executive branch and provide for sanctions in the event such process is not followed? Vital to our constitutional democracy and to our political and moral standing throughout the world is a comprehensive consideration by Congress of what is to be done for the sake of accountability and to ensure that the horrendous damage to our nation and to much of the rest of the world as a result of the illegal and abusive misconduct of administration officials Mr. Chairman, is the never time has expired. again repeated. If I could just sum up, the way to get to that accountability and deterrence is the appointment of a select committee similar to the Church and Irving Committees or an independent commission charged with investigating the abuses and making recommendations concerning reforms. That Mr. Chairman. spell a recommitment to our most fundamental democratic and moral principles. Thank you, Mr. Chair.